Father, we again we marvel at your faithfulness to us and for the opportunity we have to rejoice in, in not only our salvation, but you giving to us your word that we might better understand our salvation and understand of what you uh, are asking of us and what you can do for us. Now, we, as we study your word today, we pray that, that you might uh, open our eyes, help us to be able to comprehend and also put into practice the uh, uh, studies that we're going to be looking at, but we pray in Christ's name. Amen. The survey method that we're discussing today in this session is uh, something of which I have used a few times in my life. Uh, and uh, this is a study that can scare the living daylights out of a student, or it can encourage you <laughs> one way or the other. Now, uh, I have done a survey study on just about everything, and uh, you can find a number of books that, that, that cover surveys. For example, a book that I have in my library that I feel quite uh, great about is Robert Grimaki's uh, Survey of the New Testament. Love this book. Uh, a book that I happen to uh, treasure because it was signed by the author, is, uh, is a guy by the name of Irving Jensen. He has a uh, survey of the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. This happens to be the uh, Old Testament. I'm not a book salesman, but if I were, let me uh, show a couple books that are very precious to me. Uh, this, uh, you will find, is is pattern after the material I'll be showing you today and something that I have put in print and something that uh, that is available. And uh, if you'd like a signed copy, just contact me on Facebook. As well as this just covers up from the period between the, the Minor Prophets and goes up through the Book of Acts. And uh, that's the only thing I've, I've officially put in print even though I have a lot of other works. For example, I'm asking you in this study to do a uh, study on the book of Ruth. Uh, and I'll be showing you some uh, examples today based on the book of Joshua. And uh, so I've done a lot of, of surveys and uh, all the New Testament books as well as a number of the Old Testament books. Well, the survey... If you haven't already done so, make sure that you go to the bottom of the video and download the uh, uh, programs that are there, the files that are there. The reason for it is because I'm not going to be to, in this uh, session today showing you this outline. But I will be showing you an example of this out, from this outline. And so if you take this outline and you go through any materials that I have put in print, you will find that they uh, are put together exactly the way this outline uh, is given to you. So for your benefit today, we're going to look at the book of Joshua. And since I'm going to be asking you to do a study on the book of Ruth, this study uh, will be uh, from the same same section or the same from the historical books. Now, step one is we look at the authorship. In this case, it happens to be Joshua. We look at his name. Uh, and uh, notice the fact that his name was changed by Moses. Look at the meaning of the name. One of the things that we have a tendency to do if we're reading through genealogy is we get very bored very quickly. But if you start looking at these names in regards to the meaning and, and the significance of that name with that meaning, uh, you can find there's a lot of good material there that you might jump over just thinking, oh my, this is a waste of time. And so don't be afraid to realize that uh, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And there's a purpose in that. And so 
uh, looking at individuals as we t last session talked about the biographical study. Very, very important to look at individuals because they give us a wealth of information. Also look at an individual in regard to the, to the early life and the development as they proceeded in life. For example, looking at Joshua, we look at his life, his early life, we look at his, uh, his training, uh, all these things that we can find uh, in, in Scripture in, in regard to uh, his life. Very something very, very uh, elementary, yet very, very important, which we, we have, uh, will harp on over and over again and have in, this, in these sessions. And that is, if you put down a bit of information, make sure you put down the evidence or the scripture that backs that information up. Because if it is old, uh, you, you're going to say, you're going to do some scratching of, of, of your resources to find the material uh, or the evidence and the references uh, that uh, that information came from. So make sure you always list the references. Because references are proof. In other words, uh, if I tell you that I can jump off this building and fly, uh, you probably won't believe me unless I demonstrate it. So, it's, so it's true of Scripture. And so if you make a statement, be able to back it up. Make sure that you, you clearly state what, you, what the Scripture is saying and that, that you have proof for that. We look at his middle years. You look at his latter years, all this information uh, is uh, probably pretty, pretty detailed, but yet could be expanded upon even more than what I have done so here. So step one of the authorship is to give it a study of that individual. Part, second part of that is to look at, at the individual, uh, the evidence for that individual being the author of the book. In other words, each internal, what we call internal evidence. In other words, what information we find in the book that proves that Joshua is the author of this book. In other words, we're not just going to say, go based on say so, but we're going to go based on what we find in the book that backs that up. And so, you may find, uh, in regard to proof, you may find that there's one, two, three, or four reasons for believing that individual was off of the book, or you may find even more. And in this case, we have 11 evidences uh, for uh, believing that Joshua wrote this book. And then lastly, the third part of the authorship is looking at external evidence. What do we find by way of evidence? For in this case, we find a Jewish tradition states that, uh, that Joshua was the author of the book. Now, the second part of the, uh, the survey is looking at the title of the book. And in this case, Joshua, the title comes from the main character. And we date this book somewhere around 1390 B.C. Uh, and uh, the fact is that there's 24 years that is covered by the narrative of the book of Joshua. And this comes by a process of, of identifying the information that's provided for us in the book and the captivity of the promised land. The place written don't know exact city, don't know exact area, but we do know it's in the promised land after Joshua had uh, conquered the promised land. It's written to the Jewish people and the place in the canon. This is a Hebrew canon. We're not talking about in our, our collection of scriptures. We're talking about the Hebrew canon here. If we go back a few stations, I, tell you, I told you that that everything I do in regard to the, the uh, looking at a book is always see Christ. And so my theme for the book of Joshua is see Christ through his servant's faithfulness. 
in my key verses, chapter 11, verse 23. And uh, if you want to find out if I know what I'm talking about or if I have a good idea, it goes to that verse to see if this, uh, this theme agrees with uh, this verse. Now, something else I, I do, and that is I look at key w words. And in this regard, even though it's used over 50 times, I will record every location where this word is found, if it's a key word. Where in behalf of what we looked at in the character quality method, we looked at that and we said that if we did a particular study on a Greek word or a Hebrew word that was used more than 50 times, it did not record all the references. But in this regard, that I do. Key phrases. Now, uh, dropping on down to the purpose. The purpose can be put together in uh, a number of ways. One is you could uh, put down the purpose in regard to chapters one through whatever in chapter so and so from there, that point on uh, gives a no, no uh, bit of information or you can just list it the way I put it together here. As we can see uh, as we go through our Bible we, we look at the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible and then we go uh, on to, uh, to the book of Joshua. Now the background, insights from geography, names of people or people groups, uh, the people groups and, and biographical study basically put together pretty much the same way. Then we drop down, we look at the second area would be cities that are identified in, in the uh, the book itself, and again, just another study of all the all the cities, and uh, of course, the outline uh, uh, that you have there for the study will give you that information as well. Okay, we're going to jump from page fourteen to page thirty now. All right. In other words, there's a lot of homework in this this assignment. Uh, the distinctive features. The distinctive features is a section which I refer to as the storage area. Uh, I'm sure that in your home, if you're married, you have a, a drawer that uh, is a catch-all, or you have an area in your home that's a catch-all uh, for materials that you don't have, uh, have uh, uh, if you, a special place for. Well, in the distinctive features, uh, you can put all kinds of different studies. Now, in the outline you, you are provided that you downloaded already, you'll find it just says distinctive features. It doesn't give you anything underneath of it, okay? And so, in this section, I record uh, studies such as uh, things that I find that's interesting that makes this book stand out. Or, uh, if you go through any of my survey books, you'll find charts where it will list uh, verses, uh, not verses, but verses, yes, to sometimes verses that are maybe re uh, that are uh, referred to or uh, quoted in the New Testament if I'm dealing with the Old Testament book. You'll also find as that I do studies on words that are not used anyplace else in that uh, section, whether it be Old Testament or New Testament. In other words, if it's a Hebrew word, uh, that is uh, only used uh, in the book of Joshua. Uh, I'll record that reference and uh, uh, a short blurb about that, maybe even a meeting about that word. Or if it's a, a reference to a place that is not used in place else in, in, in Scripture, except in this book. Or a person or anything that is identified in this book that you don't find in place else. 
I will record that information in the distinctive features. Now, in regard to the, what you see in this study, we're looking at uh, it reveals about about the person and work of God, and uh, we have uh, two. We have four uh, four points under that lessons taught, types that are set forth in the book of uh, Joshua. Now, something I have not done yet that I've already talked to you about in regard to distinctive pictures, so you can see that this is not a completed study as far as I'm concerned. That is, I have not listed uh, in the distinctive features words that you don't find any place else in the Old Testament, and also uh, by words that's not found any place in the Old Testament, it's talking about Hebrew words, not English words, Hebrew words. Uh, and also, we're talking about uh, people or or places that's not found any place else that is not included here so that automatically you can see from what I've already told you this is not completed this study is not yet completed now this is page 31 of my study so how much time have I put into it at least an hour and a half but uh, how much time do I have to put in it yet probably near an hour and a half okay and so you're looking at a study that's very large. Now, something you do not find in this study that is in your outline is a cultural study. Uh, there are a number of books that deal with culture uh, in regards to, to the scriptures. Now, I happen to have put together my own uh, cultural study. And I showed you last session my... Uh, section on on uh, uh, characters in the Bible. Now, I have a cultural study here, and I also have a study on cities and uh, locations, geographical information in, in this. And is this complete? No. <laughs> it's not complete yet. As, as you can see, there's a few pages. Uh, and uh, in other words, uh, I'm not yet arrived yet at all the studies that I have on, on record of trying to do. So, uh, don't get discouraged if you're working on a survey method, because there's always more room, <laughs> always more to do. Now, uh, also, I'm looking at this outline, and I'm saying this outline's not a good outline, because it's not complete either. And uh, if you uh, I've already seen some outlines, you know that that's true. Now, the next part of our survey method is what we call paragraph chart. Now, you back up to one of the, I think it's second, uh, well, I believe it's our third. Of course, my mind is already blank. I don't remember what session it was. We, we already covered this information. That is working in a paragraph. We deal with a paragraph in, in God, regard to the context, your observations in, in regard to the paragraph, and uh, so forth. Uh, and so as you're working in a paragraph, there's many things that we can look at and, and can be considering. The, this is the, the most important part of a paragraph study as far as I'm concerned. If I'm working through a particular book, this is paperwork or the chart that I use when doing a paragraph chart. Now, there, I've already said in regard to previous session that uh, there are some Bibles that will give you suggestions on paragraphs. And you can agree with them or you can disagree with them. Because this is your study, but this is a this is a form that I use uh, in every every study that I do. Now this is what it looks like when you put it in finished form. This is just uh, chart number one of my paragraphs in Joshua. In other words. The point I'm trying to make by showing you this is if I suggest it to you, I do it. 
I'm not telling you to do something I don't practice and I don't do. Because I have unlimited illustrations that I can show you that whatever I say or whatever I've taught, that uh, that's exactly how I have uh, approached scripture study. Notice that in this chart, we not only have a number of paragraphs, but we also have references. We have a caption, <coughs> excuse me, or what we call the content of that paragraph, what we feel to be the key verses or key verse, what we feel to be the key word or words, and also a key phrase of every paragraph. Now, if you mark your Bible, and you, if you've done a, a paragraph study, uh, you can you can just uh, be called upon uh, on the spur of a moment as uh, some Sunday school teacher doesn't show up or whatever, and uh, you just have your Bible with you. If you've uh, done your paragraph study, then you can walk into that uh, that uh, particular setting that the Lord has opened the door for you to step into, and He can He can ease, give you uh, insight based on what you've already done uh, in order to make your time with those students profitable. And so I'm big on paragraph charts. Now, if you've got, got time to prepare, you may want to go to a nurse chart. Uh, every, every book I've done a paragraph chart, uh, uh, or every book I've done a survey method on, let me back up, uh, a survey method on, I've also done book charts. Uh, this is uh, this is foundation because one of the things that I've already said and want to reemphasize again: visual aids are very very critical in teaching. And so, if you can show how that that uh, a passage of scripture uh, is connected. And how it proceeds on to the next point, and the next point, and the next point, and the next point, uh, then you have accomplished much with your your uh, time and teaching. And so, for example, if I'm going to put together a series of uh, lessons or Sun School material on this particular book of Joshua, this is going to be my key starting point. And uh, also, this is a key because this also tells you what my outline for the particular book is. So we have Roman number one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, A, B. So basically, all you're doing is taking your outline, if you've got a good outline, and putting it into chart. The thing is that if you follow this outline uh, that, uh, for the survey, you will be then equipped to approach the book and do an outline. Until you do your background study, until you do your survey, you can't outline the book. You can, and the thing that amazes me is if you pick up any, uh, well, I, I hate to say any, most commentaries, you find that they spend about that much introduction, and then they go into the material. And uh, I feel that uh, that uh, the critical part of any uh, just digesting of the material in the book is based on doing a survey of the book first. Because you can't do uh, the survey without digesting the book either. And so it's going to be it's going to happen as you process your way through it. Because if you're looking for examples in a particular book, like the book of Joshua, for his writing of this book, you're going to be reading through the book looking for that, that concept. But you're going to glean some other things but along that process as well. And if you're reading through the book and you say, well, this word appears here, 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 uh, it's going to be, again, it's going to cause you to have tunnel vision in regard to that, that, that emphasis. But is you're going to clean as you go through it too. Then you're going to say, well, this word appears too. And so you just have scrap paper, you write down your word, and then 
uh, you list every reference and anything else that comes up you think you've seen it before, write that word down again. And uh, any word you come again, uh, as you're going through looking for that first word, you're going to be jotting down all the other references that appear. Again, you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. You can what I call cheating. You can you can punch it into a computer and get all your verses and get all your references uh, for a particular word, but it's cheating you because you're not reading the passage. It's a love letter, so read it over and over and over and over again. Now, one of the things that I, I have showed you before when we were looking at the book of, uh, or doing a observation method, and we were looking at the book of Ephesians, is I showed you a different type chart where you would take these four headings and then you would expand each one of these out with more points underneath. Uh, for example, you could have four or five points underneath Joshua's commission or uh, four or five points under uh, uh, the spy sent into Jericho. Uh, the reason why I would expand on that because if I'm teaching through that book in a Sunday school setting, uh, I want to show again so that they can not only hear it, but see it, and, and also uh, give evidence uh, for what we've been t and what we're teaching from this passage of scripture. So there's a lot of things you can do after you come up with this particular chart and moving on forward. Now, one of the things that that has been very profitable uh, in my life is uh, doing the survey and then what, doing what I call Sun School material of a particular book. Now, have I done Sun School uh, study on, uh, on all the books I've done survey on? No. Uh, as you can see, I've got enough projects going on right now that, uh, that I can't do everything I want to do. And uh, my pastor challenged me on outlining the book of Psalms, and uh, and so uh, I worked on and outlined three Psalms this particular week. So I have a lot of projects that are, that are on the back burner, and some that I'd like to get see and uh, completed, but uh, I have I have priorities, time limits. But the survey method is is something that that uh, you need to know how to do. Uh, even though, like I said, I showed you some tools that will give you the, the material, but you need to know how they came up with the material and, and uh, why it is done. And so that's the reason why we're in this session talking about the survey method, so that you can do your own homework, find out whether, uh, the, that, uh, whether it's something you pick up that I've done or something someone else has done, whether they have done a, a, a thorough job during the survey. You realize we spent very little time in this session, but uh, I've told you before, and I tell you again, that the best time spent in class, the more you spend out. So literally, you could take a month, uh, eight hours a day, and, and work on a survey of a particular book and still not be satisfied if you're a detailed person. So, uh, happy studies. Now, I'm asking you to do a, a survey of the book of Ruth. I've already showed you that uh, uh, my little study of, of the book of Joshua is, is uh, probably uh, somewhere around... Uh, 37 pages. Uh, my, my survey of the book of, of Ruth is uh, a little longer than that, I believe. And I'm not done yet, so I'm still working on it too. And so uh, uh, hopefully you have fun working with Ruth. Uh, it's a, a good a good study. And uh, I began, just tell one on myself, I began a Sunday school lesson uh, of the book of Ruth and uh, I've got uh, stalled I've not, uh, not gotten very far I think I have about three lessons done 
But uh, it's it's been a fun project, and uh, every time I look at a book, uh, I do it again and expand what I've already done. So uh, don't be afraid uh, to come back to something you've already worked on and find out th that you can expand upon what you've already done and uh, still be even more beneficial uh, in your relationship with the study of God's Word. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, so, in thinking about the book of Joshua, I mean, there's a lot of content there. Uh, at what point do you kind of have a sense of the, uh, the key verse? There's a lot of content in Joshua. What brought you to that particular verse, unless it tells you exactly, like I know Joshua, a lot of people pull particular text out of the last chapter, I'm sorry, of Judges, um, you know, there's one particular verse that a lot of people pull out, but in a book like Joshua, what, um, at what point do you find that key verse coming to the surface for you? Well, I don't have that verse in front of me right now, and I didn't even read my Bible to this sure. class, so that tells you I'm a poor student <laughs> of the scriptures, but uh, I'd have to uh, look at that verse. Uh, you have, you have that verse in front yeah, of us I mean, here. Uh, uh, so uh, it's chapter eleven. Yeah, the, the key verse, chapter eleven, twenty-three. Yeah, I had it actually open to it. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses, and Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes, and the land rested from war. Okay, the reason why I chose that verse is because Moses was given the instructions. But uh, what's my theme? My theme is see, see Christ to the faithful servant. Uh, in other words, Moses wasn't, wasn't able to carry out these plans, but Joshua was faithful to do exactly what God had told Moses to do. So he was faithful from step one all the way through, even with the experience of AI and the fact that looking like, hey, God's failed us here. He was still faithful. Thank you. So I don't know if you find anybody else that has that key verse or not. I don't know. But I'm different. I'm, I'm unique. You're a very boy of a kind, and that's me. Okay. So, uh, the other words, when you're studying a passage of Scripture, you don't have to agree with everybody else. Just don't make new calls. Just be honest with the Scriptures. And so you may, someone else may have your theme, or your, the content of your theme, but they may have a different verse they use to back that up. And that's fine. Not a problem. And if you want to have more than one verse, that's great too. But uh, I just made it simple for me. Okay, any other questions? This is a biggie. And uh, it uh, can be overwhelming. And so don't get discouraged during a survey study. And uh, you do not necessarily, in the survey method, have to do a cultural study. I just gave you the outline so that you know how, if you were to really advance your study, that you could go by this to, to do a cultural study. Now, how big is my cultural study? Well, it's a few pages. Now, are there good cultural studies uh, available in print? And uh, online, yes, there are. But uh, I, I want to do one for myself, so I did. Uh, anything I'd like to have done in uh, regard to my cultural study is I would like to have visuals. And uh, I don't, I've got some friends that could do that for me, but uh, I'm not gifted in that. As I showed you in my chart in the last session, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty raw when it comes to to join charts. If it's not something I can just put in squares or triangles or 
but it just would help for me to do that. In other words, I'm not left-handed like my pastor, and I'm not gifted in knowledge. Hmm. Let's look at the Lord prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the fun that we have in studying your word, the joy of realizing that how much you love us and how much you care for us and how much you want to use your word in our lives. And so we pray that you might strengthen us, encourage us to study your word more diligently. And that for this would be your praise, for we pray in Christ's name. Amen.